three, two, one. You're joining me in Brackenfield today to take a little bit. Beep, beep. Uh, if you don't speak, then you won't get spot to hop. Pardon? Mike's a hop. That's like a. Mike's a hop. Come on, make an expression, mate. Um, Mike's a hop. It made me happy if you want. Just be careful with that, it's quite hot. Mike's a hop. Can you stop? Because you're going to make me laugh when I'm going to lose my chair. Now we age like fine wine. How we supposed to do? Peep the shade on the timelines. This time, because people don't know. Who are you? What are you doing here today? James Humphrey Stone, co-founder of The Avenue, and today we are shooting this incredible barn conversion. Oh, nice one. How long have we been here? We have been here since 12 o'clock, and it's now approaching 4 o'clock, and I am starving. <laughs> yeah, this guy approaching, man. Um, so obviously, The Avenue is your baby. It is. What is your favourite thing about, you know, owning The Avenue, being a part of it? Wow, what is my favourite thing? I think the uh for me it's probably um and this is going to sound a bit cheesy i love to see people winning so the fact that we've created a platform for them to get their names out there to get their faces out there and to see them exchanging on fantastic deals um you know we've got agents who's to be quite honest their lives have been changed by the environment that we've created and, and that fills me with immense pride cool i mean I think that's pretty much it. We'll let you go get some food. Thanks. Ted's <laughs> got anything left for my, for my charity thing. No cakes left, no cakes left. <laughs> no. Are you can... still filming? No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs>
action. So Chris, sorry to interrupt you making a tea, but welcome to the Avenue Block, mate, how are you? Um, okay, I'm just back from big photo shoot, so I need, and it's coffee, not so. Oh, well, there we go. So I just wanted to touch on uh, your journey at the Avenue. And that was a really interesting start for you. So I just wanted you to, you to kind of introduce us to that and tell us more about how it all started and the wacky things that come from it. Interesting start. Uh, yeah, I suppose it was in some ways. It was interesting both in terms of the style um, that we chose to, like the, the left field, more creative style of the video shoots. Um, and also interesting, I guess, the way for me, one property, one golden property led to so many other opportunities. Um, that, that sort of thing you were, is that what you were referring to? Yeah, so do you want to just touch on that and how it, and where it all spirals out of control, for example? <laughs> Spiral out of control. Well, um, the thing is with, with videos um, and presenting and marketing in general, there's something out there for everybody and it's very difficult to find something that works for the whole audience and the only way of doing that is by having something that's so bland that it really doesn't hit the, hit the mark. So I think my uh, the, the channel I decided to go down or the path was to try and make things as um, interesting, fun, innovative um, if I can say that word as possible. So sometimes I did do the jumping in the swimming pool of dressed up as, you know, Romeo and Juliet and hung out a window. Um, I even did a wacky bit with, a, you know, the big scouts as Afro and the, the moustache being pretending I was a, a news reader and stuff. Now the weird thing is, is that that property was the wackiest video I ever did. And even I watched it back and thought, Mm, I think I've pushed that a bit too far um, and I did get feedback on that that was the property that sold that vendor was um, you know absolutely golden and she put it on the market because of the one of the first properties I ever had which was called Gainsborough Drive um, so Gainsborough Drive led me to this other property where I did the wacky video um, she we sold that and she also owned a farm which we also put on the market. Um, and the other thing about Gainsborough, how all things sort of link back. So the, one of the people that viewed Gainsborough, um, she uh, viewed it, decided against it, but then came back to me a year later to put her property on the market, which is in a village just down the road in Hurley. So that links in. The lady that actually went on to buy Gainsborough um, actually had two properties to sell um, in Sutton Coalfield and put those on the market with me as well. And would you believe my next appointment today, and this is no word of a lie, at four o'clock and it's 25 minutes past two now, I've just got back from a shoot, is on 32 Gainsborough Drive. And they've called me out because they saw the video and the work that we did at 18 Gainsborough Drive. So it's nuts the way things can work and spread out like a bit of a spider's web. But for me, I guess that's worked. Lastly, I think we'll touch on being a self-employed estate agent and kind of the, the, the highs and lows of that because at the end of the day, we want to give people the, the, the real life behind the scenes at, at the Avenue, so. Yeah, well, it's, it's tough. And I think the thing is, the problem with, or the, the challenge of being self-employed is clearly you don't have a set income every month. Um, and therefore it can be peaks and troughs. So having the impact of a sale or two sales falling through, if it, it, you know, you get the high of having, you know, I've got a, uh, a buyer that's buying one of my properties and then they're buying another one of my properties and that's all amazing. And then the buyer at the bottom of the chain pulls out when you're about to complete and that then has, can have a big impact um, on your income. So it's about trying, that's what I find I think the most challenging. Um, the, the good thing I guess about just having the network of colleagues that we've got is that there are always people to bounce ideas off. Um, when I say get support, I don't mean just to like, oh, there, there, Chris, isn't that? I mean like real objective, 
um, ideas and support in terms of what, what I can actually do and what we can do maybe a little bit differently. Sometimes that's a chat over a coffee, come and have a chat and we'll go through it. Sometimes it's a, you know, a, a FaceTime or a Teams call or a Zoom call um, and sometimes it's just a text with some ideas and some support um, and, I, and I like that and that, that hope um, will be what continues to get us through the, the lows. Thank you.